My name is Settle. Thanks, guys. So my name is Alex Settle, and this hilarious talk about working from home is going to be called Home and Away. That was QFest. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's what I expect, guys. I want some morale. <laughs> All right, so I want to do a couple of quick questions. Firstly, who reads the oatmeal? Who's read this amazing, amazing piece of work? That's right, OK. Keep your hands up if you've ever worked from home. Cool, awesome. So we're on the same team, right? Who works from home full time or has ever worked from home full time? Hey, this is my people. Amazing. So we're kind of all on the same track here. So I basically just want to start off with the fact that like, um, I sort of will be doing a comparison of my past, em uh, past employer, employers, I should say, and my current employer, but I will not be naming names. Nothing to do with the companies, but this is about my personal experience and has nothing to do with them. So that's just straight up. Please respect my decision. <laughs> Don't ask me where I work unless it's outside later and we can have a chat about other things. OK, so let's start off with working in an office. Who here has worked in an office, a tech office? Yeah, right. So we all get it, right? Everyone's, there's a different section. You have QE, product, support, development, documentation, which is why we're all here. Um, but on the, so I'm sort of going off the cuff because I sort of figured like writing something out as a documenter would just be too much of the mundane day to day for me. So I'm just going to go with it. But basically, I just want to talk about the fact that like being a documenter is all about communication. You communicate between every department every day. And when you're working in an office, one of the most amazing things you can do basically is <laughs> go up to people. You can straight away like Lucy here, you know, I need something from Lucy. I can bribe her with a chocolate biscuit to get the things that I want, the information I want. Zach brought up an excellent point about being an amazing technical writer has a lot to do with the fact that you're not, you don't just make things up as you go along. You have to go find that information. That's what it's all about. And you don't necessarily have to be overly techy to be a great writer. You just have to be interested in learning, basically. My background is as a, as a creative writer. I did a creative writing degree at uni, mostly despite my parents. And as a actually surprised my father, who was an engineer. I ended up working in a tech company, so he's thrilled. But that's another conversation we're going to have. <laughs> anyway, basically, documentating is all about communicating and working from that. Working from home. Who has ever struggled with working from home? Has anyone had that day that they just can't get out of bed? You've lost communication with your friends. You don't know what's going on. Like, that's, that's a big issue. And I'm 24, and I've been working from home for two years. I'm technically in the peak of my social life, apparently. Um, but honestly, my first year of working from home sucked. It sucked. All of a sudden, you become this insular being, and your job is to communicate. I mean, I, honestly, I kind of sucked. And I will be the first person to admit that. I wouldn't say my job reviews were bad, but it was definitely one of those things where I didn't feel like I could be the best employee I could be. So I think what I'm going to talk about more today is about how to avoid these kind of problems, because more and more tech companies are offering people to work from home. You, I work for an American company, and all of my colleagues are overseas. How do I communicate with them? How does it work? What is the culture like, the team morale? All of that is super, super important. And when you aren't anywhere near your colleague, that is really hard. I see my, well, my, my developers, yes, they're personally mine. I see the developers that I work with maybe twice a year at an OpenStack conference. That's not enough to get things going. So how does this work? Anyway, OK, I wrote a little thing down. So probably should actually look at that. So I spent my first year um, working where I currently am, basically dealing with what I call explosive introversion. It's this new term I've come up with. I'm quite an extroverted person. I like people. I like things. But honestly, that first year, I would spend more than two hours with someone that I personally liked, and I would get this explosive burst if I need to go home and look at my computer. Because that was way easier to have a relationship behind text. A wall of text was so easy. So how do you avoid getting into, how do you avoid getting into that void? How do you avoid being sucked down to it? So basically, I spoke with my team. A couple of them are here. We have Brian and Joe who are both on my team, but we all work from home in Brisbane. We meet up probably about once a month, and that's still all we manage. So basically, writing is naturally a solitary profession. Working from home, as far as things go, is like it suits it. It's kind of like two peas in a pod, but does it suit the individual who is meant to be a communicator? So who's ever struggled 
So who here is actually a documentation writer or has written documentation? Okay, we've got a half hand, but yes, basically. <laughs> who here has ever struggled to talk to support QE document, like documentation, you are documentation, development? Who's ever struggled to communicate and get through them? Yeah, yeah, so that's kind of pretty much everyone who just put their hands up, put them back up again. <laughs> so, like, shout out some ideas of how you've, how you've gotten past those barriers, if you have. Has anyone gotten past them? Beer. Amazing. Yeah. Conference beers. Alcohol. I work with people in the States, so I can't really take Yes, yes. But is that healthy? No. Yes, exactly. So how do you have a healthy work life and manage to communicate with your developers and still be an excellent employee nine to five? Go again, Zach. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> no, I'm not going to come up with the answers. Basically what I'm just going to do is sort of, let's just talk a little bit about how you can avoid, as I said, dipping into that void where you just pick it. Yes, Brian? Okay. <laughs> I, I would give you a hierarchy. I'd say that face-to-face -face is better than video chat. Video chat is better than IRC. IRC is better than email. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Email is better than I don't know what. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, I can see there's a hierarchy there. Um, Seeing someone when you talk to them is, is better than just hearing them. Yeah, absolutely. It's better than just typing at them. Yep. It's better than waiting two days to hear back from them. Yeah, so who's ever had to wait longer than a couple of days to get an email back from a guy and you need that right now? A guy, lady, sorry. Yeah, precisely, right? It's, it's a problem and it's even worse when you're working from home. The worst you can do is shake your monitor a lot and scream and stop off and have a midday wine and that fixes nothing. Let me tell you. And that's never happened. <coughs> just noting for the recording. <laughs> I'm not an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> Got to note these things, you know. Okay, basically, so who's worked from home for longer than a year? Yeah, awesome, guys. Cool. Right, so first things first, do you have a routine? You do? That's amazing. What is it? <laughs> yep. Absolutely. Yeah, working in your pajamas seems really fun. Um, it isn't when you start smelling three days later and you realize it's not other people, it's you. It's definitely you, because there is no other people. Yeah, perfect, that's a perfect example. Um, another great example, I knew a guy who woke up every morning. He worked, he unfortunately lived in an apartment, so his office was next to the TV, which was next to the kitchen. He would wake up every morning, he'd put on his, he'd actually put on, he put on his exercise gear and he would go for a 3k walk around the block and he'd come in and he'd pretend it's his office and he'd go for a shower and what he would call, he had a separate bathroom, or what he would call his office shower and he'd have his office and then he'd go back and he did that every day and when he finished work at five o'clock he walked back out and made it out like he was walking home. Another three k's. An amazing way also to get some exercise, get out of there because honestly, <laughs> raise your hand if you've been working from home and then haven't actually gone anywhere but the bedroom, the bathroom, the office and the kitchen for more than four days. Yeah, right, it's a problem, guys. <laughs> you have to leave. <laughs> and who's put on weight that way, guys? Yep, yep. <laughs> so what's important is exercise, making sure that you're getting out there, getting up, having a glass of water. Honestly, <laughs> it definitely does get to a point where you finish work and you're like, I'll have an after-work like after -work wine with myself. And then you realize you've had no water and you can't understand why you have a hangover after one glass of wine. <laughs> it's seriously important. Okay, so, and also have a life outside of home in the office. Yes? I would have these sort of lunch break. Perfect, perfect. Go see people, guys. Remember them? These little friends. It's important. But that's also another way, like, bringing back to the communication documentation, getting out there, having friends, like having friends. Not to say that you don't have friends, but getting out there, remembering how, what it's like to communicate with people face to face, because face to face is incredibly important, especially because you have to keep up that morale facade hmm, of losing words. If anyone would like me to write documentation, I can do that. <laughs> I'm good at them. <laughs> but basically, yeah, get out of your pajamas. Separate your work life from your family and friends. At the moment, I live with my best friend who's doing her PhD. It sounds bad, but fortunately now I have an office buddy, which is kind of a little strange because we work on totally different things. But it's actually really good. We both get up in the morning, we have a little routine. She goes down to the coffee shop and then we both meet in the office. We will work together for the day. 
We can bounce ideas off each other. They're not at all relevant. She does town planning or something. I don't know. <laughs> it's amazing, I'm sure. Zach. Yeah, so that's my next point. Who's ever worked at a shared co-working space? You want to you know about it. So basically, those who have been would know that it's actually quite a fun environment to go in. Uh, it depends on the kind of environment. I actually, so in Brisbane, there's several, but I go to a place called The Swarm. And it's a, um, an architect firm redid up this house. And then they needed, they had a big mortgage. So they were like, how are we going to make the money here? What are we going to do? And they've rented out the downstairs to work from home people. And I've met a lot of techies, actually. But not necessarily just IT tech. I know a girl who works for a brain injury, um, oh my god, what's the word? Organization. Um, thank you. Foundation, that was really hard. Uh, works for a brain injury foundation, and she does um, marketing, and she also does um, web design for them. It's amazing. I'm a doc writer, and I've helped people with GitHub, which is hilarious in itself. But like, it's an amazing experience. You get to do that. You pay basically a fee. You get to chill out with people that you've never met before, meet new friends, associate with different things, and you actually have a bit more of a routine to your day. An idea for those that haven't tried it before, but I definitely suggest it. There's um, I don't, who lives in Brisbane, by any chance? Because that's what I can tell you about. <laughs> OK, yeah, so the people I knew live in Brisbane, lived in Brisbane. Right, no surprises there. Oops, sorry. Oh, anyway, I'm totally going off train now. This is what happens when you start rambling and you don't really like plan too much. But anyway, basically, if you are struggling, don't sit at home. Remember what it's like to communicate. Go out there. It's important to your job and everything else that you actually be, the, be who you are and don't let yourself just go deep into this void of working from home and have nothing outside of that. I know Brian has a, a lovely little dog called Toby, and Toby reminds him at 2 o'clock every day to go for a walk. That's right, Toby takes Brian for a walk. It's kind of weird. <laughs> but that's like it's important that you do that kind of stuff. You know, you don't get to talk to your colleagues normally, and you need to be able to feel like your human self so you can be the best and most effective communicator you can at home, even if it's just via VC or IRC. So yeah, that was kind of like a bit of a mishmash talk, kind of, really. But anyway, who hasn't read this comic? Amazing, let's read it. Because I really want to. Oh, here we go. This pretty much sums up most of my talk. Tell me when to scroll. <laughs> this one is incredibly important. Ah, uh, I'd shave for the event. <laughs> you don't want to see my leg hair, that's it. <laughs> Ooh, distractions. Who spent a whole day doing nothing when they're meant to be working? <laughs> yeah, the pajama thing, guys. This pretty much illustrates it. <laughs> <laughs> For some it is. <laughs> okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks for that mishmash. That was good. All right, any questions about, I don't know, oatmeal? Oh, yeah, back there. Yeah. And 
and do- Yeah, that's always a bit strange, especially when their name has nothing to do with their IRC handle. Whoa. <laughs> that's always a bit weird. Um, huh? Before, you were like, oh, oh yeah, <laughs> that was helpful. <laughs> Sorry, someone else had a question? No, no. Oh, yes, Jamie. Ah, so that's really interesting because our team has made a conscious effort to do monthly meetups, and we try to have. Um, so we have our IRC channels, but we try to make sure the IRC channels are like, yes, it's work orientated, but it does have a much more social aspect to it than other work channels do. So that's one thing that we have going on. Um, uh, when we go uh, meet everyone else, like in the greater company, um, so my boss makes a conscious effort to be that kind of person who is very much like, um, culture's important and I want you to feel okay that, like, you know, we're going to look after you and your, like, your family, you know, feel okay expressing yourself when you're not okay. Uh, she tries to make it all inclusive. There's not much we can do about when we go travelling and we meet our, our greater team about how they feel about it, but there's nothing to say that we can't um, just express how happy we are and sort of say, like, you know, we're all work from home, but we feel okay, and we feel uh, really secure and safe in our roles. Um, how do you guys feel? And sort of try and bring along. Actually, that's something we're working on at the moment. Um, our teams, we're all sort of, because we have um, our a big department, and under that we obviously have like QE support, documentation, development, and within that, everyone's trying to talk a bit more. We're having a few more meetings together, uh, face to face. Uh, not face to face, sorry, um, VC meetings, where we're just trying to really get to know each other a little better, feel okay about asking questions. What um, pardon? What uh, we're having like uh, interdepartment meetings. So it'll be like documentation, we'll have a meeting with um, development on a particular project, and in that respect, then we get to ask questions, you know, what's going on. We don't feel so isolated, um, especially because also, like, we're all in different time zones. The majority of our documentation teams in Australia. Um, half of our development team is in the UK, the other half is in the US, and then product support and QE are in the US as well. So we are juggling time zones is another thing. Yeah. Just, you kind of have to go with it, and you kind of have to just, um, if, people, if people bring bad negative culture along, which does happen quite often, especially in a work from home remote team, you just kind of have to reach out to them a little more than you would to your normal colleagues and just sort of be like, are you okay? What can I do to help? Um, are you uncomfortable in your position? Do you want to move forward? What is making you unhappy? And press that more rather than trying to let them find their own way through the office. Um, yeah. Brian. So related to that, actually. Yeah. Um, so our main office is in Sydney and they're uh, mostly in sales, marketing, that sort of thing, whereas our remote teams are mostly developers, uh, writers. So there's also a sort of Because of that, it, it seems especially important when we do get the opportunity to go to the office um, and hang out there for a day or two or go down to the Christmas party if, if you're lucky enough to have an office here for your company. I mean, it, it does make a really big difference to go around. Fortunately, salespeople are very friendly, so they come talk to us rather than mm. us have to go talk to them. So we're not very good at that. Um, but it <laughs> we're working on difference. it. They get to know your face a little bit, they know who you are. Um, we might not interact on a, for work purposes. I think when you see those emails coming out about, hey, we're doing this great event, you're like, oh, I never get to go to the office event. Yeah. Um, yeah, sometimes it's important to, we, to maybe once a year or something, you just drop by and yeah. We also do have like a culture committee and they organize events and we have a representative from each team. So actually Joe is a representative um, and he goes along to the meetings and he just chats with them about what's going on. Um, can we get involved if possible? Because as Ryan said, it's in Sydney. We have a lot of that kind of stuff as well. We try to do our best because there are a lot of remote workers. <laughs> I think there's about 15 of us in total in Australia. So, yeah. Dale. Um, so do you think there's like an ideal balance of like the company and the remote team? Like, you know, like the remote team is like the office. Like. I've, my personal experience would say yes. I don't think everyone agree with that. Some pe it depends on how you like to work, I'd say. I know there's a lot of people who just prefer working from home full time. It's a much uh, quieter environment. They feel like they can really just get things done. I know people that will only, like, you know, you get your standard nine to five, I expect you to work these hours. But I know some people that will only work four hours a day because they'll just go in and get it done. Um, 
but others need that sort of social interaction day in, day out, not even day in, day out, at least once or twice a week to ensure that they are being there themselves and communicating with people face to face, like can they talk with that person that they need to chat to and yeah. So personally, if I had to pick one, I'd say I'd love to spend like three days working from home and two days in an office, but I don't have that. So yeah, that's Brian. <laughs> And then I end up working until 7 p.m. just because I want to finish something. And just sort of, and you know, in the comic it's saying, oh, interruptions, yes, they can be bad, definitely. I've, I've had that experience. But then, on the other hand, they're the things that stop you from working every once in a while and get you up from your desk and groups going to lunch and you get up and say, what are you doing? Yeah. But you don't get that at home. And I, I actually struggle with that quite a bit. You just, you know, sort of, yeah, like, oh, uh, it's 3 o'clock, what's happening? Mm. And so, like, how do people deal with that? I mean, it's such an extreme thing. Children. Ah. Is that the recommended approach? <laughs> 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 I wake up in the morning and uh, uh, we don't wait to have lunch at 3 o'clock because when I come home, you know, it's 5 or 6 or whatever, and uh, just run down to bed and I so it, it imposes some food on me. Yeah. Yeah. Out the back? Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, good. Um, the back. Yeah. Oh, God, don't they? <laughs> That's dedication, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, support the put on the calendar your lunchtime, and that way you actually get the pop up reminder on your phone at lunch. Yeah, it keeps you sort of thinking about it so you know when the time to take out. Like, if your body adjusts itself to a routine, so do the same thing every day, you just sort of start having to get it done every day. Yeah, yeah. Jamie. Yeah, it was awful. 
Yeah. It's, 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 it's too, too short to do anything with any depth. Yeah, that, that is the, the, I do find that. Yeah. I think that's what I was suggesting with you, right? If I'm struggling getting into it, mm. it's the time to go. But when it's only a small amount of time, you're like, oh, okay, all right, I can move things. Just do it. And then I'll find that I just get a little bit stuck and just like, yeah. So it's like useful for kind of getting started. Cool. Well, thank you, everyone. Oh, no, someone put the hand. No, no. Cool. All right. Thanks, guys. That was awesome. Good discussion. 10 out of 10. Do it again sometime.